Narayan and the female devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. First, uh, Sadguru Nuskudanan Swami describes us the incident of Jatanba, who was a female devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and she follow even though she was living in household system but still she was totally detached from his family his family members possessions everything he has no any kind of relation with worldly persons she had only relation with bhagwan as well as bhagwan's duties in this way she follow a sank yogi vartman meaning she had no husband she had no any kind of relation with his father his mother or any other relatives and even though she was staying in a home still she on, uh, she, she was doing only one thing and that is to worship bhagwan swami narayan that that's it now she had a inclination of meditation meaning she would like to uh, she was liking for meditating upon the form of bhagwan swami narayan as she gradually grew up his status from one step to next 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 and next and in this way she attained god realization now one thing is to follow bhagwan swami narayan's command and she follow each and every command of bhagwan swami narayan that is even though she was living in a household system meaning he even though he was living with his family members still she was totally detached from them now on the other hand as she had a uh, inclination of meditation and she was doing medit tesan upon bhagwan swami narayan's divine form and that's why she acquired a status of samadhi and that is why she had a constant contemplation on the form of bhagwan swami narayan now this both thing she had acquired and because of this both things she had no any kind of worldly attachment there is no not a slightest disturbance within her mind her mind even helps her to follow each and every command of bhagwan swami narayan and meditating meditating upon the form of bhagwan swami narayan now one day after one day one month after one month year after year goes on finally the day decided by god himself for her as a her last day that came but as bhagwan swami narayan himself gave his promise to all of his devotees that at the time of your death i will definitely will come to you and that is why according to this promise of bhagwan swami narayan to his devotees bhagwan swami narayan himself come to her at the time of her death Jatanba had no any kind of worldly attachment no any worldly desire nothing and that's why when bhagwan swami narayan come to her home at at the time of her death then bhagwan swami narayan come with thousands of divine planes then you may ask me the thousand planes how many airports there to land it or but actually this is a divine plane and they never require to any space to land on so bhagwan swami and come with thousands of divine planes and in those planes bhagwan swami and divine santo was sitting meaning bhagwan swami narayan didn't come alone he come, he came with thousands of santo uh, bhagwan swami narayan himself said to uh, 
her uh, say to his devotee here especially to Jatanba that now this is your final day and I especially come to you so be ready and prepare for coming with me to my Akshardham now Jatanba said Maharaj I am ready I have no any kind of desire or I have no any kind of attachment I have not even uh, even my last wish but Santo was there with Maharaj Santo requested Maharaj Maharaj this is not a good time this is not a proper time why because at the time <coughs> at the time at that particular uh, reason there was a unknown viral infectious disease and because of this unknown viral infection there are thousands of people died in a day and that is why Santo requested Maharaj if you come here and if you took this Jatanba to your Akshardham then the other people who are the non-believer they believe that Jatanba was also died because of this unknown viral infection now according to Santo's request Maharaj agree with the Santo this is the main point whether the soul meaning whether a person is eligible for going to Akshardham or not that is not the main thing if a person is not eligible for Akshardham and still Maharaj Ekantik Santo like our Puja Guruji he requested Maharaj then Maharaj accept his request and even though a person who is not eligible he immediately become eligible for going to Akshardham and even though a person who is virtuous who had all kind of virtues he had never committed any kind of sin in a life but if he had <coughs> not pleased any one of a son and because of that if at the time of his death or if any time any Ekantik son requested to Maharaj Maharaj please do not take this soul to Akshardham then Maharaj never pick up that soul this is what the Bhakta Chintamani meaning Sadguru Nishkuran Swami describe us <coughs> now according to Santo's request Maharaj agree with with the Santo and Maharaj said okay we will come at another time not now not in near future but after this uh, disease is over from this uh, area from this reason then after we will come again to take Jatanba to our Akshardham then Sri Ji Maharaj uh, again say to Jatanba that this is what the situation this is not a proper time because if you die in this time then the people who are not a duty of mine they believe that Jatanba was died because of this disease not because of Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself come to her to take her in Akshardham and that is why Jatanba he, she had no any kind of desire she even she had not a desire to go to Akshardham she believed even because of Maharaj's command if I stay here on this earth then I am in Akshardham and that is why she had also not a, even a slightest pain in her heart because she already feeling a divine bliss of Maharaj's murti in his meditation now but at the time of return when Maharaj came to thousands of divine planes to the village and after when after this 
uh, discussion and after this incident happened when maharaj came back to uh, aksardham with those thousands of divine planes all of the villagers they witnessed this incident that somebody come to our village with a thousands of divine planes then they understood the di- real glory of bhagwan swami narayan and they all become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan this is what the incident and an evidence that bhagwan swami narayan is a lord of all lords and he is the only supreme lord now the another incident written by sadguru niskuran and swami and that is the incident of a village umbred that was a town near vartal in that town there were many many devotees lived especially sadguru nityanand swami and sadguru gopalanand swami they have spread satsang in that town and most of the people of this town they are by uh, they are brahmin by the caste there was uh, also another female devotee whose name was jamuna ba she was also lived in that town of umret once upon a time as bhagwan swami narayan was continue continuously uh, walking or by horse or by any other way of uh, transportation Bhagwan Swami himself along with thousands of santo and some devotees goes one uh, one village to another and another to third village this is what his uh, daily routine because whoever come in contact anyhow come in contact of bhagwan's divine form or his santo then those persons gradually become a devotee and finally he can have a chance to attain ultimate liberation and that is why bhagwan and his santo continuously uh, walking or traveling one place to another even today we have our puja guru ji day and night without considering whether the it was a day or a night whether it was early morning or late night the road is good or not whether it is perfect or not without any kind of care even he had a fast or even he had eaten he never consider or never put any kind of praise to any other things but he day and night traveling throughout in india and even foreign countries why because bhagwan swami narayan himself stay in his form and whoever come in contact of our puja guru ji then he will gradually become a devotee and those who are a devotee they develop their spirituality this is what his aim and that is why guru ji traveling day and night now here bhagwan swami narayan come as a part of his traveling to the town of umret now in that town bhagwan swami narayan along with the uh, many santos and devotees stayed for 7 days after 7 days bhagwan swami narayan traveled from umret to the another village uh, that is the pansora now bhagwan swami narayan went to pansora but here in umret Jamuna Ba had desire to feed Maharaj. She had a desire, strong feeling that I have a chance if Maharaj will stay here for more, I have a chance to make a thar, meaning a food, and offer it to Bhagwan Swami Narayan. But Bhagwan Swami Narayan stayed there for seven days only, and after seven days, Bhagwan went to the another village. now as jamuna ba had a desire he had already planned to make a particular food for maharaj and she w- wanted to offer this food to maharaj but 
as maharaj had already left for another village and so her desire remained in her mind but as she was a staunch devotee of bhagwan swaminarayan and she had a love for bhagwan swaminarayan so she didn't remain in a good mood in in her home now after departing bhagwan swaminarayan she had a pain in her heart that how i was unfortunate person even though bhagwan swaminarayan himself stay here in my town for 7 days still i didn't feed him anything i didn't give him anything in this way she had a pain and in that pain when she continuously thinking in on this particular point then she finally fell unconscious now in this state of unconscious when she came some consciousness then after she slept she was sleeping and in a dream she got a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan bhagwan swami narayan himself became very pleased upon her and bhagwan himself said i myself will come to your home so prepare some food for me i am specially come to you only to eat and when jamuna ba listen this divine voice of bhagwan swami narayan she got consciousness and she immediately started to prepare whatever she had available things and she had finally completed all the thar meaning all the food for maharaj now that was the time of dinner and bhagwan swami narayan himself come divinely meaning bhagwan swami narayan was there in pansora as well as bhagwan swami narayan he- here in umrad bhagwan himself present here manifest here in umrad and uh, bhagwan went to jamuna ba's home and he asked for food now jamuna ba had according to maharaj instructions she had already completed everything meaning food and a uh, nice clothes to sit on everything now he had requested maharaj to sit on a special seat and he had offered what she had uh, prepared to give maharaj the food now in this way bhagwan swami and himself bhagwan had no kind of uh requirement or recruitment of our uh, devotees or he had not a single devotee in this world bhagwan has thousands and millions of devotees on this earth still bhagwan go each and every devotees to accept his or her devotion bhagwan never desire the very costly or very special things but bhagwan always like to accept the things which is full of our devotion in this way bhagwan swami and himself accept the devotion of one of his devotees one of his female devotees and the many devotees of this town umred they also witness this incident and they have also got a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan and finally when jamuna ba described how she had a pain after maharaj's departure and how she had a love for bhagwan so that bhagwan had himself instructed her to prepare everything and uh, gave her message that he will definitely will come and then all the devotees they also become surprised and the all realize the real glory of bhagwan swami narayan in this way bhagwan swami narayan many times gives such kind of evidence so that a devotee 
who had already a conviction in the form of bhagwan swaminarayan their conviction become very solid and those who are not a devotee of bhagwan swaminarayan they become a devotee meaning they have a uh, experience some kind of divinity in the form of bhagwan swaminarayan that is why not if they they will not get a uh, spirituality meaning a uh, development in spirituality in this world but still as they have experienced divinity in the form of bhagwan swami and so they even either in this birth or in and next birth but they will definitely become a devotee of bhagwan swami and finally they got a uh, ultimate liberation this is what the aim and glory of bhagwan swami are and now the another incident also written in this same chapter but we will describe it in next lecture jai sri swami narayan sri ganshyam maharaj ni jai सेवक सदा महाशास्त्राभ्यासी व्यर्थन गुमे पड़कदा करे वर्ता जरे सुरसरित धारा समवहे कुसंगे सत्संगी सकल जन चित्ते अति चहे घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरिकृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामीनारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओम आईडी आवर बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज द पाथ मेकर टू आवर लिबरेशन आवर पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य संतो पूज्य भगत जी and all of you devotees jay swami narayan just to recap last week's lecture tension something that's always on our mind something that we're entangled in how do we escape this tension how do we escape these responsibilities well we resolved to first and foremost temporary solutions such as escaping on a cruise or going somewhere else where there is none of this tension or responsibilities for a temporary time of 2 weeks 3 weeks or even a month or 2 months but once you're back it's all going to come right on you and then finally we concluded that there is one place where there is no such kind of tension responsibilities and only bliss happiness everlasting bliss and happiness exist and that one place is akshardham now in that akshardham admits that akshardham we talked about the main attraction the main attraction just like how if we go to a zoo and a eager child were to go up to a fence to see a lion come out of its den such kind of you can say curiosity such kind of patience to see this attraction the same 
exact fashion in the divine abode of Akshardham Bhagwan Swami Narayan Gansham Maharaj is the main attraction he is the show that is why all those countless souls attach themselves to this idol to this form you can say to this murti for such kind of everlasting happiness and due to that his bliss is never ever unsatisfying but it always fulfills that mukt or that soul going about that manner now we talked about and if you re remember where is Akshadham? well there's two particular areas number one one is it's a very far far place away just like how we have a solar system here and outside of the solar system there's other solar systems and then after a certain point it's called a galaxy and after a galaxy there is even bigger clusters of galaxies and far far even further from that place you can say from a physical standpoint Akshardham lies in such an area which is way beyond our imagination or even science or technology but Bhagwan Swaminarayan made it easy in the Vachnamur to find this happiness to find and experience this happiness where in the second fashion the Akshardham lies in the Ekantik Satpurush meaning wherever the idol of Maharaj is that's where Akshardham is so wherever the Ekantik Satpurush goes Maharaj resides in him and he also goes with him so you can say he's a walking talking mobile Akshardham surprisingly we just scratch surface on this topic and now we want to go in depth and understand and prove according to Bhagwan Swami Narayan's scriptures according to the Vachnamrut and according to the verified scriptures of Bhagwan that Akshardham lies not only in a physical standpoint very far far away from this you can say solar system or from this earth but Akshardham is wherever the Ekantik Satpurush resides so let's get right into it now we talked about lastly that Guruji is our ticket to Akshardham just like how in a plane ride if we wanted to go from here to let's say India obviously from a plane ride you need a ticket you need a boarding pass to board the plane and then fly across the ocean and fly across various countries to land in Akshardham in the same exact way Puja Guruji he is our ticket how so well it's said that only one who has seen the path it's said that only one who has seen the road can show others the road or path in the same exact manner such a divine person who has attained Bhagwan himself can guide others to attain Bhagwan meaning to make it simple for all of you in school suppose you want to become a doctor obviously you're still in elementary school but you have high hopes of becoming a doctor now you grow older and you go to middle school you get great grades and after that you go to high school and you really get great grades because you're very motivated you really get one of the highest scores in your schools for the SATs and now you're applying for college you apply and get into one of the best colleges in the country in college for the four years you major in biology and now it's time to apply for med school in med school obviously it's very very tough that exam is no joke and on the first try you get a great score 
and get into a med school that you wanted to get into. And here it all begins. You majored in biology, yes. You passed the first grade and the second grade and third grade with simple addition and subtraction and dividing and multiplication. You also went through middle school and learned geometry and algebra and in high school more advanced chemistry and physics and calculus. All these various subjects were thrown at you and it was great. You had a great time. It was easy for you because you were intelligent from the beginning. And in college, biology was also not a problem for you. You did all the labs perfectly and it was great. But now, med school, something which is more or something that's new for you, something that's more challenging in your life than you've ever seen before. Things that have never been thrown at you are thrown in med school and there there's your professor who's teaching you each and every way, each and every step, guiding you through each and every process to help you out, to help you understand so that you are educated to such a fine standard that when you do become a doctor, there will be no kind of complications on a human ever so you can save each and every life. But how was going through med school possible? The first year, second year, third year, fourth year, and you're done. You're in your residency. You're pretty much a doctor now. You're officially a doctor. But how was it possible? Obviously, your professor, he guided you. He guided you so much so that even when you needed help in the fashion where some things you could you read over and over you read all day long you studied in the library with your friends and group yet you could not figure out but your professor when you went to him when you took his refuge exactly to the point where you became like you didn't know anything and you made the professor or you accepted the professor in such a high fashion that he knew everything each and every particle each and every equation to such a factor that this is the only person you could go to to get help and when you took this refuge and when you accepted his guidance and when you pretty much applied his solutions to your equations to your problems they were all solved and you passed his exams that was when you remembered in your fourth year of graduation or your fourth year of college by graduating as a doctor that your professor was the one who helped you out in the same exact manner. Asadu, who has seen the path, can only give you or show you the path as well. It's simple logic, but sometimes we just don't understand it because it's just human nature not to accept you can say refuge or not to accept someone else above you but the main important thing is when you did accept you got you passed med school and you attained your goal uh, to become a doctor and when you accept they can't accept Purusha's words you'll also attain Akshardham. There is no doubt. But I want to go over a couple of points with you. According to the Vachnamrut, Shuji Maharaj says that that only God and His Son can grant liberation. So when one attains God or His Son, then apart from this, there is no other liberation for the Jeev. This itself is ultimate liberation. There's a couple of verses that our Puja Nan Santo have sung in Kirtans and in also various scriptures that proves this exact point that I want to go over with you. Santa Hune Hunte Vardi Santare Emma Emma 
मुखे कहे भगवंत रे संत मान जो मारी मूर्ति रे तेमा फेर नथी एक रति रे तेमा फेर नथी एक रति रे मीनिंग द संत एंड माय सेल्फ आर वन भगवान स्वामी नारायण इज स्टेटिंग इफ सच काइंड ऑफ वननेस इज अटेन्ड by an individual on this earth how could we perceive him to be a mere human a mere human has attributes of sleeping eating and pretty much indulging in the panchvishes or the worldly de- desires but in a gandhik satpurush has the attributes of holy having affection for bhagwan only having affection for his dham his murti and pretty much having a disvolge or having pretty much no affection for this world at all this is a characteristic saying that bhagwan himself and the ekantak satpurush are one bhagwan himself resides in his saint and does his work we can see right now our puja guru ji 6 years ago he by pretty being pretty much elected was elected to become the chairman of vartal temple it's a mandir in or it's a temple in uh, india which is one of the main six temples that shri ji maharaj constructed in his time and it is one of the head leading temples which has control over 1500 smaller temples and by the grace of maharaj by the inspiration of maharaj our puja guru ji became the head of pretty much 1500 temples and this main temple now before puja guru ji was there there were no kind of works being done how so well the temple was broken down it had a bad reputation there were many many corrupted people there but after puja guru ji stepped foot the whole image changed he did works that it was said that were not done since shri ji maharaj's time he did works he changed the whole face of the mandir selflessly working doing seva night and day running not even looking at his health not even seeing anything but bhagwan in each and every action in each and every karya meaning in each and every work seeing that this is bhagwan's work appreciating each and every person accepting insults from various people and turning it into nectar such kind of saintliness puja guru ji displayed and due to this saintliness due to his very effort puja guru ji completely turned the face of this mandir around how could this be possible there were many many saints who had guided the temple before or managed the temple before but nothing had happened no kind of works had happened but we can say we can see not only say but we can see that maharaj himself worked and lived through guru ji and did all these works this could only be the possible answer that these works were attained puja guru ji his humility to to stay below and not to even show that he had done all this work is really true saintliness that we can see also in a kirtan nan santo prove that dekandik satpurush and maharaj are one maharaj lives inside the ekantik satpurush saying that vedanti arupi ke che nyaya yanu mani le che te walo santo mare che re saluni chabi sajanand 
सुखकारी रे सलोनी छबी व्हाट इज दिस मीन वेदांति अरूपी कहे छे वेदांत मीनिंग द स्क्रिप्चर्स से दैट भगवान इज फॉर्मलेस इन न्याय anumani legend nyay is another scripture a very ancient scripture that is just guessing how maharaj is they don't exactly know how exactly maharaj is but vedantiya rupi ke che nyay anumani le che te walo santo ma re che the scriptures cannot calculate cannot fathom bhagwan's greatness or who exactly or how bhagwan is that very bhagwan lives inside such an ekantik satpurush who possesses these kinds of saintliness attributes virtues seeing that bhagwan in the vachramud said that the darshan of such a true bhakta of god is equivalent to the darshan of god himself he is so great meaning the ekantik satpurush that his darshan alone can redeem countless countless lives gadara first chapter 37th vachana just for your reference what imagine that we have attained akshardham as of right now here on earth maharaj himself is saying the darshan of such a true bhakta meaning a bhakta does not mean that it's only a devotee a bhakta is pretty much a person who is devoted to bhagwan swami narayan it can be a sant it can be even a hari bhagat of that caliber of god is equivalent to the darshan of god himself pretty much applying this very statement and seeing it in our puja guru ji that whenever i have the darshan of puja guru ji i have had darshan of god himself This is not an understatement. Why? Because Bhagwan Swami Narayan is stating it in his Divine Vachanamru, which he stated 200 years ago in the village of Gadara. Not only that, but this fact can be proven through Puja Guru Ji's various, various, you can say, leelas or divine incidents in his lives, in his life. How so? Well, I want to just narrate one just one experience because there's so many. But after looking and after seeing and after thinking about many many charitras, many many leelas of Puja Guru Ji, there is one leela that you kids who are watching will not even be able to believe. And it's pretty much a trip that Puja Guru Ji went on with devotees. I don't know if you've heard of but it's called Mansarwar Lake. It's a lake located in Tibet. Yes, located in Tibet and it's the highest located freshwater lake in the world at the height of 15,000 feet. Now, pretty much it's located and situated on the Himalayan mountain ranges in Tibet. What is the significance? Why do santos go there? Because when maharaj was had taken the form of nilkant varni about 220 years ago he had traveled to this divine lake and there by his divine footsteps he had pretty much purified this lake maharaj had traveled many areas across india the land of india to be exact 12 over 12000 kilometers barefooted Maharaj had traveled for 7 long years and this was one of the special areas that Maharaj had visited a lake all the way in Tibet and there Maharaj had visited and then after that many many devotees many many santos would go there just to have the darshan of this lake just to pretty much take some water and put it on themselves to purify themselves This is the mayma this is the glory of such this lake so our puja guru ji organized a yatra meaning a pilgrimage to this very lake in the year of 2009 and in the year of 
Fujiguro Ji went in the year of 2009 and everything was great and then in the year of 2010 a, a small tiny problem occurred we'll see there were many santos who went but along with that just so that devotees can take love or benefit of this rare you can say uh, opportunity to go on this pilgrimage there were many many devotees from the United States uh, the United Kingdom Africa and India that also gathered in 2010 to go on this pilgrimage out of many many devotees there was one devotee from the United States particularly his name was Bharat Bay from Jacksonville Illinois and he himself was a very healthy Bhagat there were no problems with his physical health he had passed his medical clearance and he was good to go on this return or this you can say pilgrimage so he arrived in India there and he started to go everything was great Puja Guruji, Puja Santo and all the devotees were there with him going and it was all good and then after he raised he reached base camp by the Himalayan ranges to go up to Mansarva. Mansarva, remember, is at the height of 15,000 feet. He was probably only had at a base height of about, probably you want to say 5,000 feet or a little even lower, base camp. So he started to have problems breathing, a lack of breathing, and he couldn't breathe, inhale and exhale properly. Due to that, he became very frightened. And the problem at hand became that Pujasanto called doctors to see if he can if they can fix the problem. And at first Puja, the all the doctors said that, you know, let's give him oxygen, let's apply many methods. And they did all these various methods and Bharatpay was just not getting better. He could not get a good rhythm of oxygen exhaling and inhaling out and in. So what to do, what to do? So the next thing that happened was that all the doctors said that, you know, he is not capable of going to this Mansurver Lake because his health is not good and he can even die. This is the words that they used. Soon before we knew it, Puja Guruji got this word that his health is not well and he is unable to travel further. But our Puja Guruji had a sankal, had a thought that he wanted to take each and every sadhu and each and every Hari Bhagat to this Mansurur lake. He did not want to leave anyone behind. This was his thought, his vichar, his very strong and firm thought. And hearing this Bharatpa's incident, he said, bring Bharatpa here to me. And Bharatpa came to Puja Guruji. And Bharatpa was completely just you can say over exaggerating things where he's breathing all in and out very hard and pretty much I don't think he was pretending to have a hard time he was probably having a hard time but I think that sometimes when we receive some kind of minor pain to the body we kind of tend to over exaggerate since we haven't ever experienced such kind of pain or I don't think this would even be described as pain just kind of a little uh, problem with rhythmatic uh, breathing, you can say. Due to that, Bharatpa was telling Guruji that you know, you know, all these doctors have diagnosed me, and you know, I am about to die. All this, all this nonsense that really was not going to happen. But Bharatpa's, uh, you can say, willingness, willingness to have faith in these Indian doctors is you can say words diagnosis that he was about to die Guruji laughed it off and Guruji said Bharatpa he grabbed Bharatpa's wrist and he looked him into the eyes and he said Bharatpa your life is in my hands what are you worried about now just imagine someone who's new in satsang someone that has not really had any experience with particularly what satsang is or who the Akantik Satpurush is. 
And if that person was standing besides Puja Guruji when he said this particular statement that your life is in my hands, your life is in my hands, first and foremost, what would that person think? I don't even think that that person has even ever heard of these kinds of words come out of a person on this earth, you can say. Yet, our Puja Guruji, saying this with confidence to Bharat Bhai, holding his wrist, that Bharat Bhai, your life is in my hands. What can this be described as? That's what I want to share with you. Really, I mean, doctors can control a person's life to a certain extent, or he, they can put them on a regulator, or they can give them oxygen to a certain point, or they can give them some medicine and insulin and injections and whatnot to a certain point where they can keep this human body living on this earth. But just by a, a sadhu, just by a saint grabbing a person's wrist and saying that your life is in my hands, what can be said about this? It's completely, completely beyond our imagination. And those who have not ever experienced such an Ekantik Sadpurusha's, uh, you can say, divine aura, aura or you can say divine uh, personality, would probably say that he is crazy or this is not possible. But you know what thing that happened in Mansur was? Puja Guruji said this and built Bharatpa's confidence and slowly by slowly reaching heights of 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 10,000, 12,000, 15,000 feet, they reached the lake of Mansarvar and Bharatpa got to do snan, got to bathe in this lake of Mansarvar and he came out and you know what the funny part was that he was the only one that did not have problems and other santo and devotees had to take oxygen while they were climbing, ascending to Mansur. But Bharatpa did not need any kind of medical attention or so even oxygen. And he climbed the whole way without any kind of assistance. He bathed in the lake and then he came down safely as well. But how could this be possible? Bharatpa is now safe and sound in Jacksonville running his motel business with no kind of complications. But how was this possible? It's all due to the Ekantik Satpurush and not only that, but Sriji Maharaj, our Sajanan Swami, our Gansham Maharaj residing in him ever so in each and every action, in each and every moment, doing and performing each and every action. It was only Gansham Maharaj himself that was saying through Puja Guruji that your life is in my hands. And such kind of divine personality we have attained who gives us bliss by dancing in front of us who gives us bliss by serving us food, who gives us bliss by just giving us his darshan. What can we say? But the main factor to understand is that happiness, everlasting happiness, are subject at hand. Becoming free from all this tension, complication, lies in the hands of our Puja Guruji. Saying this, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. Shri Patim Shri Dharam Sarvadevishwaram Bhakti Dhar Matajam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Kesavam Kamadam Karanam Sri Swami Narayanam Nilakantam Bhaje Shri Gansham Maharajani Jai.